Take a look at problem number 510. It says if P is equal to 6 newtons, what is the magnitude of the force exerted on block 1 by block 2? So we have a P force over here. It's, a, it's being exerted on the very first block on the left hand side. It's equal to 60, 6 newtons. But we don't really know what's happening at this contact here. We know that block 1 is pushing on 2 and 2 is pushing back according to Newton's third law. And then there's also forces going on at this connection here. So it's rather complicated. But the easiest way for us to go about this is to get more information first. And what we're going to do is blob all three of these blocks together into one total mass. We have two, three, and five. So we have a total mass of 10 kilograms. And we'll just think of then we only have one external force acting on this in the x direction, and that is this force P equal to 6 newtons. And we also have external forces in the y direction, which would be a weight and a normal force. But those are canceling out in the y direction, and they're transverse to the actual motion. So P will be the only force responsible to make this whole blob accelerate to the right with some acceleration A. So if I were to write Newton's second law based on the x direction, I would say the summation of all the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration. This would be the total mass times acceleration, ma. And that would equal the net force in the direction of acceleration. In this case, that's just p. So I have ma equals p. So the acceleration is going to equal p divided by m. And that's going to be 6 newtons divided by 10 kilograms, or 0.6 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of this blob. And actually, that would be the acceleration of the individual masses themselves, because they're all connected. So that's good to know. Now having that information, we want to focus in, say, on mass number one. Let's do a free body diagram of mass number one. We know it's two kilograms and if we look at all the external forces acting on it, well we've got this P force pushing out on the left at six newtons. We've got weight equal to mg which would be um, two times g. And we have a normal force acting in the positive y direction. And then we have a pushing force, which I'm going to call Q, pushing back, which is the force exerted on block 1 by block 2, it is the reaction force of the force exerted by block 1 on block 2. So they're going back and forth, and they have the same magnitude force. And as a result of all these forces, these four forces, this block manages to accelerate to the right with a value of 0.6 meters per second squared. We just determined that for the whole blob, but that's true for the individual masses as well. So if I look at the Newton's second law in the x direction, I would say the summation of all the forces in the x direction is equal to mass 1 times a, and that is equal to the net force in the direction of acceleration to the right would be positive, so we're going to have P minus Q. We want to solve for Q, so Q will equal P minus mass 1 minus mass 1 times A. So that is going to be equal to 6 newtons minus 2 times A, which is 0.6, which is going to be 4.8 newtons. So the force exerted on block 1 by block 2 is the value of Q, which is 4.8 newtons.